everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So here we are again in the studio today and uh, I've been playing around this morning with uh, a few ideas and um, there's always something coming up. I'm just going to show you a couple of ideas that I'm going to be doing over the next few days. Um, we did some birds on a branch a little while ago, a few times, and I'm still exploring that idea. I think it's rather, rather a cute one. So um, keep an eye out for Robin, Blue Tit and uh, Anonymous Bird. I haven't decided what kind that's going to be. That will be coming up soon. Uh, plus, I've done some sketches of some butterflies here, which I'm quite, quite pleased with. They're sort of monochromatic, but really um, pretty and subtle. So uh, we'll be working towards doing that too. But for today, I've decided on um, a hummingbird with a hibiscus flower. And so I've been practicing that this morning. This is my preliminary sketch, which I'm gonna be drawing out in a minute on the watercolor paper. So before I get started on that, I'll just uh, point out the different colors that I'm going to be using, probably. Um, this is quite uh, an interesting way um, that I've developed of painting the actual flower, where I'm going to be dropping in, first of all, some alizarin crimson at the top here, then um, some a permanent rose or one of the bright opera type pinks plus quinacridone gold and then some um, quinacridone purple to give the shadow around the back there and then um, we'll be using the quinacridone again plus um, cobalt blue for the leaves and then the bird I'm going to probably be doing that in turquoise and quinacridone violet and that's another little dish of quinacridone gold just in case I run out no, just joking. It's just uh, I'll mix one with the green and one with the red so we don't get a kind of grey result. Okay, so I'm going to draw the outline sketch of this um, um, hummingbird and hibiscus and uh, just lightly in pencil. Um, it's, it's very useful to download the sketches from the website, so if you just go over to dianeanton.com um, and you can download them there for free and they'll always be there for you um, you don't absolutely have to download hundreds of them all at one go but it doesn't make any difference anyway because they're free in any case so there's the bird and I'm just lightly going over my tracing because um, having done the drawing once, I didn't particularly need to do it again. So anyway, trying to get it the same so that when you come to copy uh, or do the tutorial, it'll be the same. So there's the center and the petals. And then around this area here, I'm only going to lightly, very lightly indicate where the uh, leaves are going to be because I'm going to do them quite loosely. You can change the size, of course, if you've got a photocopier and you download my sketch, you can always enlarge it before you trace it and, and, and draw it. This is fairly small. Um, it could definitely be done bigger. But the main thing is I'm doing this on proper watercolour paper um, and I heartily suggest, again, that you do too. Don't, 
try to don't expect good results i mean it's all right if you want to just play around but don't expect good results if you're going to use sketch paper for watercolor painting because you won't get them you'll just get lots of frustrations i know it seems expensive but um well the hobbies are aren't they And it is, and there's usually a bargain to be had somewhere if you search. Hard enough. Okay, so that's the sketch done. We have the flower here, the leaves, the stem, and the little birdie. Okay, so now I'm going to start painting um, the hibiscus first of all. And uh, as I said, I'm going to be doing it in, in three shades of red. So we'll start off with alizarin crimson and I'm just going to be dropping that in for the first area there. Um, pretty pretty random really, it doesn't matter much um, exactly how you space it out. And then we'll have some uh, quinacridone gold nearer the top where there might be a little bit more um, perhaps intense light. And then um, um, this is permanent rose. So that's going to come down on this side here and uh, we'll blend it in with a bit of water there. And then I'm going to <coughs> put some purple, quinacridone purple with a little bit of red. And I'm going to drop that into the center and I'm hoping that this is going to uh, just blend out and give us a shadowy dark center, hopefully. You can never be quite sure how this is all going to work out. Um, to tell you the truth, I've done three so far today and um, due to various interruptions and my own in, um, inability to concentrate or think or not think or whatever it is that you do when you're painting, um, they haven't gone very well at all. I'm going to put some dark in here for the back of the flower. And then I'm going to pretty much say a little prayer. Um, and we'll leave that to blur. And then once it's blurred, we'll sharpen it up probably with pen. And I'm going to go to the bird now. And I'm just going to put in his eye in ink. Like that. Now that won't run because that's a um, pigment liner and it won't run as, as opposed to if I was going to use um, paint it might bleed so I'm going to mix a little bit of turquoise with some cobalt blue I'm trying to keep it a little bit um, transparent I've tried the turquoise on its own and it's a little bit opaque so I wasn't terribly pleased with that and then I'm going to just drop that in on the wings and then just sort of blur that out a little bit. And then I want to do the breast in pink and mauve. So it's um, quinacridone purple and permanent rose or potter's pink just for the chest. And the re reason really I've chosen that color is because I think it's quite pretty and not because it's real, I don't know. Then I'm going to pick up some um, darker uh, purple, the same colours, quinacridone purple and um, cobalt blue and then I'm going to just drop that in along the top line there and hope that that's going to also bleed nicely and we'll put that in the back of the bird there and then I'm just going to rinse my brush and drag that down and put the little feet in and then drag that as well to give the feathers and not play with that too much I think their feet kind of hang back like that don't they and then we'll want to put his beak in just take that up closer to his eye
Now um, we can do the leaves and the way I like to do leaves generally is to drop in some quinacridone gold first of all and then add some blue to give me a soft green which will be mixing and mingling on the paper and then drag that round to do more of them. You can also add purple and then that will give you a darker green like that. So you might want to drop some of that into these ones over here. thing to do is mostly to vary the colours. You don't want to put all the leaves the same colour. And the quinacridone purple works quite well with cobalt blue and quinacridone gold to give you various different shades of greenish. And then we're going to just drag down from there the stem. To get the serrated edge, just pull the paint out a little bit at the edges. If you want to um, indicate the veins without having to actually draw them, you can take a feather or some other sharp implement and just draw into the paint and you'll get where, where you make the indentation. And this varies according to which paper you're using too. This one that I'm using here is Lana and I can't remember who makes Lana off the top of my head, I've forgotten. But anyway, so this one actually takes indentations really strongly. So there's no need really to do much more than that. And we'll let it dry. And I'm wondering whether it might be worth putting some, don't know if that's going to do anything at all. Probably not. Right. And as this dries, you can add more color so you've got a bit of variety there. And you can lift it out if you want as well. So it's not very dark in the middle. I was hoping that would stay darker, so I'll add a little bit more. Okay, now. At this point, I know from experience that we have to wait. And let it dry. Okay, now it's dry and uh, it's looking not too bad. So I've mixed up a little bit of white gouache with some pale pink and I'm just going to draw in the base of the anther here. I just need a little bit more water on that. Stamen. You could use a white pen but my white pen is not behaving itself at the moment so I'm going to do this with um, white gouache. You don't want it to be bright white anyway, it just wants to be a little bit lighter. And then because you can paint over watercolour with gouache and you'll get a, a reasonable effect. So then up here I'm just going to do some dots and carry on the stamen out there like that. And then I think we need a little bit of yellow attached. It's got yellow as well so I'll put some dots of yellow. Oh, 
well, that will do for that, I think. And um, for the bird, I do feel he needs his, the ring around his eye needs to be made a little bit less prominent, like that. And then maybe I'm going to avoid the use of um, um, pen on this one because it's quite delicate and I'm going to try to just sketch in one or two little lines there to emphasize the shape and the curve of his wing a little bit on the tail revisit the feet like that whoops Built some water there, that's not clever, is it? That's an opportunity for, um, what do you call it? Uh, spatter. So we'll just strengthen the shadows a little bit on the leaves. Put a little bit more in there, especially near the bottoms. And maybe make um, a little bit yellower where it is already on the yellow side. And then I'm going to just strengthen the dark down here just a tiny bit more. Um, maybe a few, the lines that come out like that just to give it the shape, the curve. Okay, no fiddling. So it's always a good idea to put a mount around it before you decide whether or not it's completely finished. You'll see all sorts of things. I don't know why it is, but somehow putting a frame around it brings things into sharp focus. I'm going to stop now. I've played enough one morning. So that's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed watching me do that and uh, that it gives you some ideas for something of your own to do. Um, if you did enjoy it, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. There's something new every day that's bound to be something that you really want to paint coming along soon. Um, also, please leave comments in the comment boxes below. That really helps us as far as YouTube is concerned. They love to see people interacting with the channels. So we really appreciate your every comment. And if you have any questions to ask, um, please put them there and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And meanwhile, go to the website, uh, dianeanton.com, where you can download the free video, uh, sorry, the free sketches um, on there. And um, also we have a Facebook page, Learn to Paint Watercolour, where you can share your own creations and chat with other people who also follow this channel. So that's a really nice place for you to get lots of support and encouragement and so on and so forth, especially if you're a beginner, because that's what it's all about. So I shall let you go now and uh, have a lovely day, have a lovely evening, depending on what time of the day it is, wherever you are. And um, I will speak to you all soon. See you tomorrow. Bye now. Bye everyone. Bye bye.